I saw this movie five years ago as a 28 year old man I took my girlfriend to see this it's a great film Lego movie and explains the ending of the earlier film in detail. I've tried to keep this review from spoiling plot details of the new film which you couldn't have guessed from watching the trailer. How the first movie ended at the end of 2014 This original The Lego Movie, Finn's father, played by Will Ferrell, puts the cap back on the cradle, saving the city of Bricksburg from becoming locked in time. He goes on to explain to Finn that I've got to tell you something. Now that I'm letting you come down here and play, guess who else gets to come down here and play? Your sister within seconds, a sparkly UFO arrives in Bricksburg delivering three crudely designed Duplo characters. The Duplo figures offer an ominous warning in a young girl's voice. We are from the planet Duplo. We are here to destroy you judging from the trailers for the Lego Movie 2. The second part, it looks like the creatures from planet Duplo were very effective in destroying Bricksburg. All that seems to have survived the relentless attack is the half early built Apocalypseburg and the Mad Max inspired interpretations of the heroes from the first film. Cast of characters Wild Steel is back with a bandana and dustproof will straight out of Burning Man, Batman is tougher than ever with oversized shoulder pads made out of car tires, and Unicity has learned to channel her buried anger into the monstrous Ultraka T. Benny and Emmett's unshakable enthusiasm and obliviousness seems to have shielded them from post-apocalyptic transformations, appearing pretty much the same as they did in the first movie. We're also going to be introduced to Rex Dangerous the tough guy hybrid of Chris Pratt's cinematic roles as a galaxy defending, archaeologist, cowboy, and raptor trainer, referencing his roles as Star Lord and Guardians of the Galaxy, Joshua Faraday in The Magnificent Seven, Owen Grady in Jurassic World, and possible future role as Indiana Jones. The film's antagonist is Sweet Mayhem. The candy-colored space traveler is a friend's middle rather than the classic Lego minifigure, complete with transparent sparkly blue wings and bright reddish filled magenta and bright bluish dark turquoise slash teal accents. Number 70,822 Unicity's sweetest friends is faithful to the characters in the movie. Number 70,822 Unicity's sweetest friends is faithful to the characters in the movie. The sex released so far reveals several new supporting characters including three minute idols, Susan, Tempo, and Melody, Benny's three spaceman friends, Lenny, Jenny, and Kenny, and several anthropomorphous brick-built characters, Chocolate Bar, Ice Cream Cone, and Banana. The story of the Lego Movie 2 begins how the previous movie ended with a sparkly UFO descending on Bricksburg to deliver three monsters from Planet Duplo who are here to destroy you. After bikering amongst themselves, it is Emmett who presents a pink heart made of lacquer bricks to the monsters. It is little surprise that the beasts devour the offering and begin destroying the city. Without missing a beat, we are thrust into frantic scenes where our heroes fight to protect Bricksburg against wave after wave of destruction. After this brief opening sequence, we find ourselves five years later with our familiar heroes living in Apocalypseburg, the appropriately named post-apocalyptic city which was half as early built in the outskirts of the ruined city of Bricksburg. Almost everyone in Apocalypseburg have transformed into bitter, battle-hardened versions of their prior selves. Except of course, for Emmett, who remains cheerful in these dark times as he walks through this small Apocalypseburg while continuing to sing along to Everything is Awesome. Number 70,840 Welcome to Apocalypseburg. is a massive set, but it compresses multiple buildings in the city into one model. Number 70,840 Welcome to Apocalypseburg is a massive set, but encompasses multiple buildings in the city into one model. After learning that Apocalypseburg is their only hope for survival against constant destruction, Emmett expresses his unflinching optimism and his fondness for Lucy by building a happy blue and yellow home just outside of Apocalypseburg. While showing off the happy home that he hopes they could live in, they see a bright light streak across the sky. Upon further investigation, they learn that something they have never seen before has landed on their planet the Seaster Starship has arrived. We soon learn that the ship is piloted by Sweet Mayhem. In a white, pink, and blue spacesuit, she is the first Minotaur to appear in the Lego Movie World. Number 70,830 Sweet Mayhem Seaster Starship is nearly identical to how her ship looks in the movie. Number 70,830 Sweet Mayhem Seaster Starship is nearly identical to how her ship looks in the movie. After yet another destructive onslaught, our heroes are forced to retrieve to safety. Despite their best efforts, Sweet Mayhem manages to abduct the five bravest citizens of Apocalypseburg and take them to the Seaster system. Afraid that Lucy is in danger, Emmett builds a ship and sets out on his own to rescue Lucy and four other heroes. In trying to rescue Lucy, we meet Rex Dangerous and visit several widely different planets where we discover a diverse cast of new characters. Along the way, we explore the competing pressures of embracing your family and growing up. 
the first part of which the original film many times because it features interesting characters and an enjoyable story with something to offer to viewers of all ages. Adult fans will appreciate how faithfully the movie recreates the jerky stop-motion style of popular brick films, massive brick-built environments, and geeky references like how Emmett can see Lego part IDs for every Lego brick around him when he finally becomes a master builder at the end of the movie. A not-so-subtle nod to how Neo can see the code within the Matrix. While I don't prefer films which employ a story within a story as a frame and device, it works pretty well in this movie. The brief live action interlude between Will Ferrell's character and the eight one half year old boy touches on the inevitable tension between how adult builders see Lego bricks as a highly sophisticated interlocking brick system and sometimes lose sight of the fact that they were originally intended as a children's toy. I was also impressed by how well they represented the various storage products which adult fans of Lego use to meticulously organize their Lego collections, including many of the products highlighted in my in-depth Lego storage guide. I'm not alone in absolutely loving the first film it has a stunning 95% score on Rotten Tomatoes, and a very high 7.8 star rating on IMB. Two unrelated LEGO movies were released in 2017. The LEGO Batman movie earning a respectable 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 7.3 on IMB. By contrast, the LEGO Ninjago movie wasn't a very good movie, receiving a score of just 56% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6.0 on IMB. The second part is in the original film, the sequel is quick to make a joke and offers plenty of Easter eggs for attentive fans. Amongst waves of destruction at the beginning of the film, someone asks where is Batman? Of course, we already know that he is off having a completely separate dental and adventure. I also enjoyed cameo appearances of not just one, but three different versions of Wonder Woman, as a minifigure, a minital, and as a Diplo figure. The stop-motion animation style is also preserved from the original movie, accurately matching the movements which are possible with real LEGO minifigures, rather than allowing their arms and legs to bend in arbitrary ways. This effect is enhanced by the decision to design almost all of the environments using LEGO bricks as well, with only a few non-LEGO design details such as occasional fabric and paper. The more relaxed use of non-brick built environments in the Lego Batman movie, and the LEGO Ninjago movie really decreased my appreciation of those films as an adult fan of LEGO. One of the things I loved about the first movie is that major plot points were only possible because their world was made of Lego. Sadly, this doesn't happen all that often. The storyline doesn't exploit the ability to rebuild the world as often as in the first film. As a Lego geek, I love that we continue to see Lego part IDs overlaid on the world when we switch into Master Builder mode. Music continues to play a central role in the new story. A few scenes are portrayed as a Disney-style musical interlude, with plenty of catchy pop music to get stuck in your head. None of the songs are quite as catchy as everything is awesome, but maybe it will just take time to warm to the new songs. As in the original film, we switch to live action occasionally to see how the real world is impacting the story taking place between the Lego characters. I do not like when movies use a frame and device like this, and found it slightly more jarring in the sequel because it happened more often. It doesn't break the story, but it does interrupt the flow of it. Conclusion I am happy to report that the Lego Movie 2. The second part is a fun movie which will appeal to adult LEGO fans and their children. The sequel is funny, faithful to real LEGO bricks, has an engaging story with compelling characters, and the conclusion is reasonably satisfying. That said, I do not think it is quite as good as the original film. Everyone I've talked to expected the first film to be a superficial story meant to sell LEGO sets. Instead, we got an engaging story which explores the tension between a child's desire to play and a world filled with rules that constrain their creativity. Since the first film was so good, it's hard not to hold the sequel to a higher bar. Siblings struggling to find common ground is the underlying story of the sequel. That's a bit harder for adult audiences to connect with. It's easier to imagine yourself as Lord Business than it is to put yourself in the shoes of Finn or his younger sister Bianca. The plot also explores the anxieties of growing up. That's a more mature theme that is a bit more laudable, but is the weaker thread in the overall story. I am extremely pleased to have a high quality sequel to one of my favorite recent movies. While I don't expect to watch it as frequently as the original, I look forward to watching it again soon. Because it isn't quite as good as the original and has less to offer to adults who aren't also fans of LEGO, the movie earned a highly rated 4 fifth star rating. It's a little better than a LEGO Batman movie, and a lot better than a LEGO Ninjago movie. Official LEGO sets there has been a product blitz leading up to the LEGO movie to a cinematic release. This includes 13 regular sets, the massive number 70,840 Welcome to Apocalypseburg. Three open-ended creator-style sets, number 70,820 LEGO Movie Maker, and several small polybug sets. 
There's even a Duplo set. Number 10895 and it and Lucy's visitors from the Duplo planet. In this section, we look at a few more sets which weren't. 